And welcome once again to the Baptist Bread Devotional and Scripture Song Broadcast for this 15th day of March. And it is Tuesday, and today's topic is titled, Learning. So, we've talked about intercession on Monday, or Sunday, and then yesterday was Expectations, and now Learning. Although these are different uh, authors for these uh, different devotionals, but it's funny how uh, they each have a specific topic. Uh, We had Intercession on Uh, Sunday, and then yesterday, expectations, and then today, learning. Amen. And we'll get started on that here in a few minutes. But first, I'd like to greet you, as always, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world, and hope and pray that he's your Lord and Savior today. If not, well, today is the day to get that uh, right in your heart, and go ahead and trust him as your Lord and Savior, and he'll wash away all your sin. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, we're going to start with today's scripture song, which is from Psalms 147.1. So if you have a scripture song book or you have your Bible open, if you're able to turn, uh, you can sing along. Amen. All right, so press play and we'll sing along with Brother Dean and Sister Patty. Psalms 147.1. Praise Praise ye the Lord, for it is good good to sing praises praises unto our God, for it is pleasant and praise is comely. Amen. Praise ye the Lord, for it is good to sing praises unto our God. For it is pleasant, and praise is comely. Praise is pleasant, and praise is unto our God. Praise ye the Lord, Good to sing praises unto our God, for it is pleasant and praise is comely. It is good to sing praises unto our God. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. So praise ye the Lord. All right, so we'll put that back to yesterday's, and we'll do those again towards the end of the broadcast. Now it's time to get into today's Baptist Bread topic, titled Learning, for this 15th day of March, Tuesday. And it says here in Matthew eleven twenty nine a the first part of verse 29, it says, Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me. And that's Jesus speaking, Matthew eleven twenty nine a And today's author is Brother Tim Green from Revival in Our Times, Day Heights, Ohio. So let me read you this topic on learning. All right, he says here, writes here, Most of us, upon turning 16, learn to drive a car. If one grew up on a farm, you probably were driving a tractor at half that age. To my mind, he says, there are four different levels of drivers in the Lord's work. So if you're a note taker, uh, you can write down these uh, four different levels of drivers in the Lord's work. And the first one is, the first is the unconscious incompetent. So the first is the unconscious incompetent. These are like two-year-old children sitting in their dad's lap, hands on the steering wheel, and they think they are driving The second is the conscious incompetent. Let's say like a 14-year-old takes the family car and 37 mailboxes later is aware of his inability to drive a car. (laughs) The third level is the one of conscious competence. And this person has taken driver's ed, passed in the classroom and on the road. While driving, they are constantly aware of everything all the time. The fourth level is, so the fourth level is unconscious competence. You don't even think about driving. You can have a thousand things on your mind and drive with confidence. By the way, this is usually why it is dangerous to ride with preachers. (laughs) Uh, so, the first one again is uh, unconscious incompetent. The second is the conscious 
and competent. And then the third is the conscious competence. And then the fourth is the unconscious competence. <clears throat> All right, so we'll continue on. It says, learning of Christ is a lifetime task. And by the time you get it, get enough sense to really help people, you are headed for heaven yourself, right? So we'll... Uh, Never be able to uh, live uh, fully Christ-like in this life, even though we strive for it, and we always should. So, learning of Christ is a lifetime task, sure is. And by the time you get enough sense to really help people, you are headed for heaven yourself. Perhaps the third level driver, uh, he puts in parentheses, uh, parentheses, Christian, is the best. So, perhaps the third level driver, Christian, is the best, for he consciously does the Lord's work. In the Lord's way, just something to think about on the way to work today. Drive safely. <laughs> Amen. Good advice there. So, drive safely, both physically and spiritually. Mm. Good advice. So, let's learn to be uh, a uh, conscious competent, or con and have conscious competence. Amen. Again, this uh, person has passed the driver's ed. Has to, in the classroom and on the road, and while driving, they are constantly aware of everything all the time. Amen. So let's take heed of that. All right. So that is the end of the topic on learning. And now go ahead and get into the boots on the ground devotional. And this is from the book Boots on the Ground: Daily Devotions for the Christian Soldier. Take that out of there for a minute. All right. So this is bit written by Randy Wells. And today's uh, topic is titled, Overconfidence Yields Failure. Hmm. <laughs> um, this event takes place all the way back on March 15, 44 BC. And the passage is from 1 Corinthians 10, 12. And it says, Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed, lest he fall. Oh, good advice there from 1 Corinthians 10, 12. All right, so he writes here on this topic, Overconfidence Yields Failure. He says, Beware the um, Ides of March, or Ides of March, I-D-E-S. So be, beware the Ides of March has become synonymous with the assassination of Julius Caesar on 15 March 44 B.C., beginning with his rise to council in 59 BC, Caesar continued to rise to power through his victories in the Gallic Wars and Rome's Civil War. Following the Civil War, the Roman Senate gave him temporary uh, dictatorial control, uh, which Caesar used to carry out reform and revisions that would aid the growing Roman Empire Becoming overconfident in his popularity and power, Caesar did not concern himself with the growing an animosity from the Senate. When Caesar declared his intentions to make his dictatorship permanent, the Senate made plans to assassinate him and to restore the Roman Republic. Although suspicious of some of the senators, Caesar was still confident that his power would triumph over any plot devised. This overconfidence ultimately led to his death at the hands of those he had trusted most. Cool. Overconfidence in our strength or talents will leave us open for failure. In Joshua 7, the Israelites became overconfident with the victory at Jericho and turned to attack the smaller city of Ai without asking for the Lord's guidance first. They failed in what had seemed to be an easy victory because God was not in the battle with them. Had they simply sought God's guidance, he would have revealed Achan's hidden sin, which kept them from victory. While God will often have, have us make plans, he still wants to be a part of those plans. <laughs> yeah, so let's make sure we're not being overconfident and making sure we're uh, making him part of those plans. Uh, 1 Corinthians one twenty five says, The foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. While the world often portrays people with power as successful, God points out that he has 
chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. 1 Corinthians 1, 27. It is not weakness to rely on God instead of ourselves, right? <laughs> Amen to that. We will be stronger with his strength than any we can formulate on our own. Mm. So let's make sure we uh, are uh, having his strength and not our own. Uh, so, amen. Another thing to take heed of and good advice there. Amen. Wow. Some good practical advice on both of the devotionals today. <laughs> Being a confident, um, a uh, a more better learner. Amen. And, uh, and confident on the Lord. Praise God. All right. So, two good devotionals. Amen. All right. So, put that aside there. And now it's time to get into today's hymn. And let me grab this here really quick. And so today's hymn was right across the page from yesterday's hymn that I sang, which was Stepping in the Light from Yesterday. And today, today's is more about Jesus. Amen. So let's make it more about Jesus today and every day. And this is page 630 in the Psalms and Hymns and Spiritual Songs book. And this is a spiritual song, The Discipleship of the Saint. And this is written by Eliza E. Hewitt, another one by her. And she lived from 1851 to 1920. And then John R. Sweeney, who lived from 1837 to 1899. <clears throat> All right, so let's play here and sing along here with the... Background music. More about Jesus would I know, more of his grace to others show, more of his saving fullness see, more of his love who died for me. More, more about Jesus. More, more about Jesus. More of his saving fullness see. More of his love who died for me. More about Jesus, let me learn More of His holy will to discern Spirit of God, my teacher be Showing the things of Christ to me More, more about Jesus More more about Jesus, more of his saving fullness see, more of his love who died for me, more about Jesus in his word, holding communion with my Lord. Hearing his voice in every line, making each faithful saying mine. More, more about Jesus. More, more about Jesus. More of his saving fullness see. More of his love who died for me. More, more about Jesus on his throne. Riches and glory are his own. More of his kingdom sure increase. More of his coming prince of peace. More, more about Jesus, more, more about Jesus, more of his saving fullness see, more of his love who died for me. Amen. So, more about Jesus. All right, now give me the 
um, the scripture here on each of the stanzas. So the first one is Philippians 3.10, and then Romans 5.8, and then the second stanza is 2 Peter 3.18, and then John 14.26, and then the third stanza is 1 John 1.7, and then Romans 10.17, and then the fourth stanza is Philippians 4.19, and then Isaiah 9.6-7, and then this, the refrain is John 3.30, and John 12.32. Amen. <clears throat> All right. So, praise the Lord. All right. Let's see here. I'm not sure which one I'll do for tomorrow, but uh, I'll have to look and see which one for tomorrow, unless you have one that you'd like to hear. Amen. So, put that aside. And uh, now we'll go ahead and sing some scripture songs before we wrap it up for today. Amen. So, we'll do yesterday's and then conclude with today's. Psalms 86, 10 through 13. For thou, thou art great, and doest, doest wondrous, wondrous things. Thou art God alone. Teach me thy way, O Lord. I will walk in thy truth. Unite my heart to fear thy name. I will praise thee, O Lord my God, with all my heart. And I will glorify thy name forevermore. For great is thy mercy toward me. And thou, and thou hast delivered my soul from the lowest hell. Amen. Here we go. For thou art great and doest wondrous things. Thou art God, our God alone. Teach me thy way, O Lord. I will walk in thy truth. Unite my heart to fear thy name. I will great and doest wondrous things. Thou art God, art God alone. I praise thee, O Lord, because it's all my heart. wondrous things. Thou art God, art God alone. It is thy mercy toward me, and thou hast delivered my soul from the lowest, the lowest hell. Thou art great, and do wondrous things. Thou art God, art God alone. Thou art God, art God alone. Amen. All right, now we'll conclude with today's. Psalms 147, 1. Praise ye the Lord, for it is good to sing praises unto our God, for it is pleasant, and praise is comely. Amen. Here we go. Praise ye the Lord, for it is good to sing praises unto our God, for it is pleasant, and praise is comely. Praise, praise, praises unto our God. Praise ye the Lord, for it is good to sing praises unto our God. For it is pleasant and praise is comely. It is good to sing praises unto our God. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. <clears throat> All right. So, praise ye the Lord. Amen. All right. So, before I 
conclude. Um, and it's time to wrap it up. Let me go ahead and give you uh, tomorrow's uh, scripture song and then the devotional topics. So tomorrow will be the 16th already. And we'll be singing Matthew nine thirty seven through 38. And it says, Then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the labors are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Amen. So, and that's true even to this day. All right. So that's the scripture song. And then tomorrow's topic for March 16th is titled, What Will You Do for Christ? Mm. And the passage is from 1 Corinthians 4.10. So that will be tomorrow's topic for Wednesday, March 16th. What will you do for Christ? And then the boots on the ground topic will be titled uh, Rescue the Perishing. Amen. And uh, that uh, event is um, March 16, 1968 is when this event takes place. And the passage is from Jude 23. So Jude uh, chapter 1 verse 23 since there's only one chapter of Jude. So verse 23 of Jude. Amen. So that'll be tomorrow's Rescue the Perishing. Amen. <clears throat> and then I'll have to pick a hymn for tomorrow. Maybe we'll uh, do one about uh, salvation. And uh, I know we already did Rescue the Perishing already uh, not too long ago. Amen. But uh, maybe we can find another one close to it. Amen. All right. So that will be uh, tomorrow's uh, Baptist Bread and uh, Boots on the Ground topics. And if you'd like to get a copy of the Scripture Songs book and CDs are available on Brother Dean and Sister Patty's website at www.dailyscripturesongs.com and that's their uh, missionary website and their missionaries to Port Kaituma, Guyana and they're over there uh, doing God's work again. Amen. So pray for them. And uh, it sounds like uh, they might be opening things back up fully. So praise the Lord for that. So I uh, hope and pray that uh be able to get over there this summer if uh, it all works out. So amen. All right. So pray for that. And that's that information. And then the Baptist Bread devotional booklets are found online at www. Uh, baptistbread.com or www.timgreenministries.org and then the Boots on the Ground book can be found on the internet or at your local bookstore. I'm not sure if they carry them there, but I'm sure you could probably see about ordering one that way or just go on the internet and order a copy. And then finally we got the uh, Psalms and Hymns and Spiritual Songs book right here. This big thick uh, book full of hymns. Uh, almost a thousand hymns in this book, and there's lots of uh, um, hymns that we know, and then some that are not so familiar, but uh, they got all these in here, and it's titled Psalms and Hymns and Spiritual Songs, and this is available on MelodyPublications.com. Amen. And then if you want to hear uh, uh, audio books being read, I uh, did The Hiding Place and then Return to the Hiding Place, and now I'm uh, working through the book uh, God's Smuggler about Brother Andrew. So check those out on the podcast at God's Messenger Lighthouse Podcast. Amen. So if you like to hear um, audiobooks uh, or if you want to get a copy of the book yourself and read it, you can probably find that somewhere on the internet or at your local bookstore. Amen. All right. Well, that'll be it for today. So thanks for watching and may the Lord richly bless you until next time. Bye for now.